Good morning and welcome everyone to the online service of Taman Saro Utama Lutheran Church. We are so thankful and give praise to God that we can have everyone come together to worship Him this beautiful morning. This service is called In the Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now pause for a moment of silent meditation before we confess our sins together. Let us confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name amen in the mercy of god almighty jesus christ was given to die for us and for his sake god forgive us all our sins to those who believe in jesus christ he gives power to become the children of god and bestow on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Bible reading is taken from Psalms 119 verse 9 to 16. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your words in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes, as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your footsteps and consider your ways. I delight your decrees. I will not neglect your word. The second Bible reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declare on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again in the passage above, he says, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter their rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he said when a long time later, later, he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would 
not have spoken later about another day. There remains then the Sabbath, rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from His. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their examples of disobedience. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid before and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Peace be with you. With a heart of thanksgiving that God's word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. In the current pandemic, let us turn to the precious roots of our Lord on the book of Ezekiel. I encourage all, please turn to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. The author of the book is the prophet Ezekiel. Let's play a small game now. Now, brothers and sisters, I challenge you to list out five prophets from the Old Testament. You can find them out with your family or by yourself. Very good. I'm hearing you, uh, your responses now. The most common responses are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Amos, etc. You have just to open the Bible to the Old Testament to see there are 17 books of the prophets divided to the major and minor books of prophets. We categorize the major and minor books through their contents. Today, we will focus on the book of Ezekiel. Probably you are not familiar with the book of Ezekiel, frankly because it's not easy to read or understand. So you may have not read it many times. Today, we will focus on the watchman mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 16. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Here mentioned, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. This is the characteristics of the prophets in the Old Testament. That the word of Jehovah will come to the prophet and order him to proclaim it to the people. So the book of Ezekiel mentions that. Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 In the thirteen days, in the fourth month on the fifth day, while of among the exiles by the Kiba River, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. So the book clearly states that given the background of Ezekiel receiving God's words on by the Kippah River. Dear brothers and sisters, do you know what is the Kiba River? Where is the place? Why does the Bible tell us the Israelites were exiled to the river? So when we read the book of Ezekiel, we can understand and know the background behind it. Especially when we're reading the Old Testament. You would just need to search the Kiba River to know where it is on Google. Before that, it's a pass. We have to go to the library to search. 
now it is very convenient just click on your mobile phones to know even our ways can bring you there opening the map we just have to point out two locations for you to know first we see where is jerusalem and how the israelites will exile to the kibar river from jerusalem and who have exiled them at the time it was the babylonia empire who have actually conquered jerusalem and exiles the israelites to the kibar river and the prophet ezekiel was among the israelites and he brought them to the river when he was among these exiles he received the words of god so when you know this background open the scriptures to see that god has said son of man i have made you a watchman for the house of israel so hear the words i speak and give them warning from me yes brothers and sisters through the message of ezekiel we can learn how to be a watchman in the time of pandemic we have to be a watchman for god to be a watchman we will have to come back to the bible and especially book of ezekiel chapter 3 and even chapter 33 verse 3 these the first requirements to be a watchman let's return to the bible and see the book of ezekiel chapter 33 verse 3 and he sees the swords coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people yes to be a watchman first you will have to know how to see and how to watch and through watching you will have to warn the people of danger so when we say god i want to be a watchman and a blessing to others how can we do that first you have to build up your own character and attitude and the first character that the watchman should inquire is bonus and courage the watchman should be full of courage and alertness based on the background of Ezekiel we can know that he's facing an internal and external crisis in his life this external crisis is due to the Babylonian Empire persecuting Israelites however the internal crisis is from the problems and the troubles caused by the Israelites in captivities in chapter 1 verse 1 we can see that Ezekiel is facing the group of Israelites who have been exiled from Jerusalem they have been exiled to the Kibar River. Returning to the map, we can see that they originally live in Jerusalem. And now they have been exiled to the Kibar River. The Israelites have to live under the Gentiles and endure their culture and various religions. Every day, the Israelites would be yearning at the thought of going back to their home in Jerusalem and the prophet Ezekiel is facing such a situation at the time so he definitely needs a lot of courage and strength to face the external and internal pressures he also needs a lot of courage to face the threat from the Babylonian Empire to comfort the Israelites under his care as well. If we have the opportunity to interview Ezekiel and ask him what is his biggest challenge as a watchman, would it be the internal or external pressures? 
Maybe he would reply that he faced both. But the hottest is the internal turmoil. I don't know whether about you, but at the current pandemic, you can say that although Ezekiel is facing such challenges, I am also facing such challenges as well. Now you would have to ask yourself whether the external pressure is greatest or the internal turmoil. You would have to pray and understand yourself, as I do not know the answer. Now Ezekiel would say that the internal turmoil is greater. Because when you open the book of Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 4, you can see that he's actually told us that the challenges is due to the obstinate and stubborn Israelites. He was sent by God to tell this group of people what God wants to tell them. But their shameless attitudes and stubbornness make it seem like playing piano to account. How shameless and this are these Israelites? Because they have been living among the Kiba River's people for a long time. They began to imitate their actions and strike away from God. Their hearts became so stubborn and they ignored Ezekiel's pleadings to turn back to God, saying that God is unfair to have placed them into such suffering, not bringing them back to Jerusalem. This is what Ezekiel means, why the obstinacies and sameness of the Israelites. May God have mercy on us. Not just on this group of Israelites, which we have read on the Bible. This shameless, obstinate and stubborn group of people without shame. When we read the Bible, we are not only read this face. We must read the scriptures like a mirror which reflects back to us. Let's reflect upon ourselves and ask God that are we stubborn and obstinate? Do we do according to our own desires and complain every day? Why are we victims in this pandemic? Why is my career facing difficulties? Why is there always problem and challenges in my life? Why? Why? And God, did you leave me? Dear brothers and sisters, may God have mercy on us. Let us learn from the scriptures and become a blessed watchman by reflecting on ourselves, whether we are actually the stubborn and obstinate people's mentions in the Bible. Of course, not all the Israelites are stubborn. Ezekiel's challenges also include those who are experiences great sorrow in their life. As we open Psalms chapter 137, verse 1, the psalmist have said that the Israelites sat and weeped by the rivers of Babylon while remembering Zion, remembering their hometown, Jerusalem, facing such a community as a watchman. Ezekiel needs sufficient bonus and courage to give warning courage to these people. What to warn them about? This is a word that appears multiple times in the book of Ezekiel. I have counted that this word which appears 34 times in the book. 
we can see how important these words is. It is what God wants to tell the Israelite. You must remember these words even if you have forgotten this entire sermon. This warning given by Ezekiel 34 times it is it is to know that I am the Lord. This sentence is not only dialect at the Israelite but also given to the others, nations and people. This is to let them know that I am the Lord. You will understand why Prophet Ezekiel told the stubborn Israelites that they would know that I am the Lord. And this is why we return to the book of Ezekiel today and put our name. You will know that He is the Lord. To know what God is Jehovah, reflecting in our daily lives and every decisions, words, actions, and thoughts. Whether we know that He is the Lord, we will have to be courageous and alert watchmen to warn the people. Just like Jesus Christ, our Lord, warns His disciples in Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verse 38. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. How many times has our body been weak while our spirit is willing? Many times indeed, how can we break free and come up from these constraints? We must go back to the words of the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 33 Verse 3 said, And he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people. Dear brothers and sisters, to be alert always, just like Ezekiel as a watchman. Disaster will strike at any moment if we are unprepared. We will fall victims to it. In history, there is a famous disaster that happens due to the failure of a watchman. Use 19 trough, the sinking of Titanic. In the year of 19 trough, this is the example of a failure watchman who failed to warn others leading the ship to collide with the iceberg. Throughout the year, it has been captured in many movies. The main cause is due to the captain, watchman, and the telegram operator failing to do their duty. The church needs a watchman of God to proclaim the gospel of Jesus. And let us pray to God to commit ourselves and become a responsible watchman of God. When we seek the guidance of Paul, book of Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. This is the preparations of being a watchman, which we have to devote ourselves to prayer and alerting others. Then our lives will be the witness to God. The American missionary called Otto Koning went to the Indonesia as a missionary. He went with his wife, Sister Carol, to become a missionary and watchman of the gospel. 
They came with the mission of sharing the gospel to the local peoples. They wanted to tell them the good news about the Lord that has complete control over the universes and every living being. At first, they opened up a ghostly store and a clinic with his wife, hoping to build up a relationship with the local peoples by selling them everyday goods. At the beginning, the missions went on just as well. However, he just couldn't bring them to accept Christ as their Savior. This made Otto very frustrated and sad. One day, Otto bought some hundreds of pineapple sprouts from another missionary. He decided to earnest to help of the local peoples in tending the pineapples, hoping to get the harvest three years later. However, Otto didn't take into consideration that when the harvest time arrived three years later, that he would not be able to get the pineapples because they have all been stolen without even a single one left. This made Otto very angry. And he is even more mad when he found out that the thief were, were his own workers. Otto decided to ask them why they had stolen his pineapples. And they just responded that whoever planted the pineapples, whoever would have the right to harvest. This is their culture. Otto decided to close down the grocery store and clinics as a punishment and even brought a dog to threaten them. However, this leads to all these local people fleeing back to the forest. Otto saw that he could not get close to them, so how was he going to share the gospel? Only after he returned to the U.S. for a seminar that he realized what a true watchman and missionary is. First, he would need to understand that God is in charge of everything in our lives, including everything that we own. Otto could finally understand it. And when he returned to Indonesia, he decided to hand over the rights to his pineapple field to God. He no longer got angry over the teeth of his pineapples, which led to the villagers asking him that had he become a Christian? These questions surprised Otto a lot. He had been a Christian for over 30 years. Why did the local peoples only ask him this question now? The people told him that they have observed him for some time and found out that he did not get angry anymore. Even when his pineapples were stolen, he did not get angry. So the local people decided to ask him whether he had become a Christian. Otto then understand that the greatest obstacles that prevent the local people from accepting Christ is from them observing him and not noticing Otto living his life as a Christian. Before this, he has not fully understand what it was to be a watchman of Christ and how to live out the gospel. 
After this, the local people no longer steal the pineapples because they have learned from Otto that all the pineapples belong to God. They do not dare to offend God. And the local people finally began one by one to accept Christ as their Savior. Dear brothers and sisters, these reflections upon ourselves, now the people allow us, our family are looking for Savior of the world. When they're sick, they're sick for Christian. And as a Christian, we have to come out with courage and boldness to guard our hearts, to guard our spouse, and to guard our family members. And to guard our church members, to guard our friends, community and nation and whole world. Today, the Ezekiel have received the calling to be a watchman. And today, God to calling you to be a watchman. And you willing, are you willing, committed to be a watchman? of God. Let's pray. Abba Father, we thank you and praise you. And through the book of Ezekiel, you have speak to us to be committed a faithful watchman of God. Let us guard ourselves first and let us watch and guard our family, guard our friends and church members, our communities, our nation and whole world and prepare ourselves to be a faithful watchman. Witness your grace and glory, Lord. We pray, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we now confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father Lord, we are thankful for the many blessings you have given us. We praise you for your daily provision, the ability to worship you as one family, and for blessing us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We ask that you continue to watch over Malaysia, even as the borders have now been opened up for international travel and movement between states. We pray against any outbreaks and increase in COVID-19 cases due to the lifting of these restrictions. May the people of Malaysia continue to stay vigilant and take all precautions to maintain the SOPs for the good health and safety of the nation. Continue to equip us to serve you daily, Father God, and may we always seek to honour you and lift your name on high in everything we do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us go out in the name of the Lord. Because God has been so gracious to us, we will serve Him. Let us proclaim the good news in our words and our deeds. We go out to share the life God gives us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.